Previously on Silo, Season 1, Episode 3. Julia became Silo's sheriff just as the mayor fell victim to a midnight murder. What do you think about this episode? Silo, Season 1, Episode 4, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Not as high as my previous episodes because it wasn't as I wasn't engaged as engaged the whole time. Previous episode, Maintenance, I was right there with it. Episode before that, I was like on the edge of my seat. What's happening? What's that? What's this thing? But this episode felt more fillerish. So six out of 10, but I still enjoyed it. Generally, I'm enjoying being in the world, uh, but not much happened this episode and I didn't get a lot of questions that I wanted answered. That's okay. I wasn't on the edge of my seat like in the other episodes. I really did enjoy the casual and overt classism. I thought that was fun. <laughs> uh, we learned more about Juliet, her father and her family, kind of understanding where she's coming from, why she's the way she is. That was kind of interesting. And we got a deal between Marnes and Juliet. We'll see how that plays out. What do you think of the episode? We got a deal with Marnes and Juliet. We also got a deal with Marnes and Sims. It's going to be interesting. Oh, that's right. Um, my, my take on Juliet's father is that he is a good father. That was some painful, traumatic stuff to do. But honest, oof, tough. I think he was a good father. Um, Holston. Holston hiding Wilkinson's file in the air vent. That really... That really uh, peeved me because there's so many ways and that could have gone bad, in which case it wouldn't we wouldn't have the story we have. And so for that reason, I have to give I have to give the episode a three out of 10 because it just it just really irked me. It really it it has everything just has to be just right for things to work out. Three out of 10. Wait, so it's a three out of 10 just because of the washer scene. It really just <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the last 10 seconds of the episode, it just puts such a such a a sour taste in my mouth. Just, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. So in this episode, I was looking at various cuts at the beginning, and I was noticing these different symbols. Here we have a tree symbol. I guess that means it's the, the arbor class. What's in here? Cafeteria. Okay. Huh. okay. Over here, next symbol. It looks like maybe people standing on the surface of a circle. And this is like that. a jail. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is the exit to the airlock where people go to clean. Mm -hmm. I see the tree over here on the left again. And then I see this spiral looking thing over here. Any idea huh. what these symbols are? Any thoughts? So this looks like a tree. I guess it would be there because there's a tree on the outside. That's what we like. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. And so it's this tree of life, I guess. Could Symbolism. it be that uh, the tree represents agriculture and the cafeteria is part of the agricultural system? I guess maybe. Maybe. Th I wonder if we look to the side, would we find like their plants and trees? But maybe the plants and trees are on the lower levels. And this is cafeteria, which is the the tip of the spear. Right. But now that I, now that you're saying it, there's a tree right here, tree right there. Yeah. And this is a tree. And then over at the airlock, which goes to the outside, also a tree. So maybe it does represent the outside, because this is to the outside, and this is the view of the outside right there. Could be. My thought was, if we look at that hallway, we see these like stone maybe metal stone stone sculptures on the left is the tree so i thought that would be like as you're leaving as you're getting kicked out of the silo you see the last glimpses of each of these departments and so on the left we see the tree which represents that tree part on the right honestly that looks like a turbine to me maybe that represents Ooh, mechanical could be mechanical and so further back we would see the mayor we would see the sh the mm. sheriffs we would see it and also judicial and so it's like as you are kicked out as you're leaving the silo you see like the symbols of all these different departments that you are that all these different people that you're getting ostracized from you're getting exiled from i see that could very well be yeah that would weigh so, heavy on me oh my goodness yeah so there might be a symbol here this is the mechanism for the door, so there's not one here and there's mm. behind us there's more. There's like, a, there's like a hallway that you have to walk down as you're getting kicked out. Oof. So I'm going to say then that this represents agriculture and the parks, people in charge of growing stuff. And the cafeteria is the end point of that system. So that's why it's a plant, a tree. I like it. And then I Something guess that that also maybe life because tree represent life and you get sure. your, you get your life from food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess this would be 
this represents the government. It's the people working together as one. Okay. Maybe. So this isn't representing the holding cell necessarily. It's just representing that the sheriff's office is part of the government. And so this is the government symbol. If I was the government, I would totally make people being happy together as my symbol. <laughs> right. right. Of course. Because that's, that's the ideal. Like That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the symbols here, well, that's just everything that you see before you get kicked out and sent to your death. Yep. All these people that you've like disappointed and yeah. And it's like the safety and security of all these different people. And then you're going to kicked out. Totally. I would totally put that in my hallway. Juliet has now become the sheriff. She moves into Holston's apartment and they leave this nice card behind. Look at the quality of this card. That's true. That's card stock, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not cut super well, but you know, that's okay. And then it says, new occupant, please send any unwanted items of the previous tenant to recycling for proper distribution. Okay, we will talk about recycling processes in the future. <sighs> well, but paper on the up top, people, seems to be not a problem. That's right. This is like, like really nice paper. It's not like printer paper that's like compressed it's just like this light fluffy stuff that's that's firm it's like calligraphy stuff this is how i'm high in paper yeah and this is something that could be communicated with a person instead they put like a nice little card right in the apartment because it's the up top people what do they call it it's down down deep the mids deep down down deep the down deep down, the down deep, deep the mids the mids and then aristocracy <laughs> the the betters and you get the nice bourgeois. card stock for random things that could be said verbally. Hmm. Although, although I will say that if they reuse this thing, all right. Okay. If they get multiple uses out of these cards, all right. But now her like grimy hands are all over it. That's right, because she's in the down deep. She's in the down deep. Maybe they don't. They're not used to the down deep people with their grimy, oily, dirty, nasty hands. Yeah, the people in the up the up top don't have any body oils. That's right. They're just completely. Right. Clean. Clean, pristine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is a flashback between Juliet and Juliet's father. Juliet wants to fix a chair. Dad's like, uh-uh. Let's take a look. Are you going to fix her chair? I don't think it's fixable, honey. So I was noticing the chair is rolling well. The mechanisms look generally in good shape. Maybe there's a missing or sheared bolt or spring missing, but nothing like completely catastrophic. The chair is just completely totaled. So let's take a look. Looks good. Rolling looks good. Look at the mechanisms here. They look okay. I mean, look Intact. at that leather. That leather, leather looks pristine. Yeah, not split. It looks mm. well moisturized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, this chair is, it should be fixed. It's actually, it's actually pretty good condition, yeah. Nope. Are you gonna fix her chair? I don't think it's fixable, honey. I figured I figured that that was because he's like a medical person, and he's very good at medical stuff. But this like mechanical things is just just not his brain. I mean, similarly, like like for us, we're like physicists. We're like, oh, it looks great, it looks great. Like, you can totally fix that. But biology stuff, I'm like, mm, I don't feel like you could do something. And then, bam, LASIK happens. Like, what? You used lasers to fix people's eyes? Oh wait. I guess actually that's also physics. Physicists also figure that out. I guess it could also mean when he says it can't be fixed, that means take it to a repair person or take it to recycling for reuse. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean he thinks it's completely broken, but uh, it's filling in. I place. guess what I'm saying is like within his skill set, within the things that he's able to fix, he's like, oh, this can't be fixed. You got to send that away. Yeah, that could be very much could be. Mm -hmm. But still, like that's that's stifling, actually, because if she has the type of mind that is like able to see how these things put together, how they how they come apart and how to, how to reassemble them, then him saying like can't be fixed. No, 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 not doable. Actually, what she needs is someone that's like, ah, follow your instincts, figure it out. You can do it. At the same time, he just lost his wife and son. Yeah. And he's not going to be behaving perfectly. I mean, he's supporting his daughter, but, you know, it's hard to be perfect when you're dealing with your own emotional shit and your daughter's dealing with her own emotional shit. And yeah, you're supposed to be the perfect supporting father, but it doesn't always come across that way. Both of their lives have been wrecked. Like, yeah. it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And she rolls out this chair that maybe he has an emotional connection to and he's like, can't be fixed. I just, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. 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 Could be. <sighs> In fact, that makes a lot of sense. Like, he doesn't want to get rid of the chair 
because he has an emotional connection to it. Has maybe had memories on it, uh, but but he also doesn't know how to fix it. So he's like, I just shove it in the corner. I can't deal with it. That's right. Actually, that makes a lot of sense now. Let's take mm. one more look. Mm. Are you gonna fix your chair? I don't think it's fixable, honey. Okay, I think I figured it out. Can we look at the chair? How bent backwards it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I think right it has, <clears throat> it has sentimental memories because like he and his wife were f***ing on that chair, and then they broke it, and he's like, "This is the last time. This is the last time I was deep, 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 and I can't, I can't ever have that again. I don't want to fix it. It can't be fixed. But, but here, this girl, she's like, I want to fix it. And he's like, No, that's the position that I left it in because that was the." But I, I no longer have her in my life. And your brother's dead too, I guess. And so he doesn't want to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So Juliet goes up to become the new sheriff. And the sheriff's assistant or secretary asks for his measurements. Let's watch. If you know your measurements and shoe size, write them down and I'll get you at least one uniform by tomorrow. Does this mean they're manufacturing new uniforms? I think so. I, I interpret this as they have like our like racks of jackets and pants, and so the assistant will like will assemble an appropriate uniform. And if they need more, then they can make more, I guess. But I, to your point of your question, then if there are there are extra jackets and pants sitting on racks, then yeah, they must have been made because no way for like a hundred and something years, however old the silo is, no way are they still holding onto clothing from the before times. Um, so yeah, they must be making them in there. So that must mean my guess is hemp. Hemp is hemp, really hemp. Is, hemp is, is, it essential, up. is essentially a weed that can be made into cloth, and it's easy to grow. I mean, what else would you use? You're not going to waste livestock on that, right? That's right. And it's kind of fibrous and coarse, but these people, uh, you know, but <laughs> they didn't got no other options. <laughs> I mean, it's like fibrous. And, it's fibrous and coarse now because we haven't refined the manufacturing methods. But maybe. Oh. It doesn't have to be. I'm unfamiliar with that. That's my only experience of, I touched it. I was like, oh, rough, don't like. So that's my guess. They use hemp to make new uniforms. They have to, because there's no way there's 250 year old uniforms sitting around. They would degrade so much, they'd be unwearable. That's all right. It would just be holes everywhere. It'd be super like thinned out. <laughs> like, yeah. Everyone wearing like a thin veil of clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. They must be making clothing. So the agricultural department who's in charge of making sure this stuff can be grown and new materials made is super important impressive we haven't met a farmer yet even the the seamsters the like the textiles people kicking ass kicking ass yeah damn because these a lot of the stuff they're wearing looks pretty hardy yep yeah and it's not like oversized it's like tailored well like well done well done yeah absolutely also, I noticed they talked about shoes, so they're manufacturing shoes as well. If you know your measurements and shoe size, right? Shoe size. That's right. It's a shoe size, right? I mean, shoe. they have cows, so they are making leather. And shoes can last, so yeah, oh, they, yeah. They, they must use, so when they slaughter the cows for meat, they also must use the leather for shoes. Yeah, a bunch which of means stuff, they, everything. They have leather workers who are doing a great Ooh, job. I bet they're really efficient at using the animals, like like minimal yeah. waste product. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to be in such a resource constrained environment. They must be. I think so. I guess what forms of energy do they take in? It's really just that geothermal from the from the uh, turbines. Mm -hmm. That's it. Which we said they it's steam coming up from somewhere they don't know, a which geyser. we said is some kind of like a geyser geothermal thing. Mm -hmm. It's this mm -hmm. constant supply of steam. Cool. So, cool. Here we go. I was told to stock the fridge in the apartment, but I have no idea what you people eat down deep. I love the casual classism. Like, why talk down to somebody? Because you can. Fuck it. She could have just said, I don't know what y'all like down there. I don't know. She could have personalized it and said, I don't know what you like to eat, so I put some standard stuff in the fridge. Mm. I don't mm -hmm. have to make it all mm -hmm. personal. I was told to stock the fridge in the apartment, but I have no idea what you people eat down deep. She even could have said, like, I don't know what y'all taste like, but I don't know, like, oh, what type of spices you like, or whatever. There's, there's not even a need for, like, making casual classism, being like, you people. It could have been, I don't know what you eat. 
what do you enjoy to eat? And then when she answers down below, down deep food, she can be like, you're stupid. <laughs> it, it's just a total setup. It's just a bait, <laughs> just a trap, just a trap for Juliet. <laughs> That's right. Individualize your classism. That's right. It's not classist if it's just hate for one person. If you use the hate for the whole group manifested through an individual, you're hating on an individual. It's okay. I just don't like your face, Juliet, from Down Deep. I was told to stock the fridge in the apartment, but I have no idea what you people eat down deep. She also could have said I couldn't find any dirt. <laughs> no, that's, that's, oh. just, that's, that's just directly mean. <laughs> couldn't find any fecal matter. I couldn't find any shit to eat or babies or people, whatever you eat. Monsters. Thank you for working, though. Appreciate the whole silo operating. In. Thank you for keeping us alive. Yeah. yeah, but she doesn't know that. She just thinks she's better than everybody. The silo just works somehow. Mm -hmm. Works. Everyone works. So Juliet is going to recycling to drop off her brother and her mother's items because it needs to be recycled or distributed to other people who could use it. Why was this guy so nice? You doing this all by yourself? Yeah. So, young lady, is this all your stuff? My mom, she didn't need any work. Is that so? The other stuff for my brothers. How old is he? He was 11. Keep some of this stuff if you want. These guys, they're not going to know what to do with it. What about your father? He around? He's working. You know, you shouldn't be doing this alone. Not at your age. That's some wise old grandpa vibes. But at the same time, it's a little bit of an overreach because, like, he doesn't know this girl's story like he could be really like dip pulling at some strings that have not healed yet um which which he does actually um it's a bit of an overreach in my mind like it's not his kid but at the same time that is some sweet grandpa stuff that he's saying uh now that you mention it it is kind of an overreach listen to this oh no, you shouldn't be doing this alone you shouldn't be doing this alone that's a judgment statement that's so right. it's it's turned from asking kindly grandpa questions showing concern to like your family's doing it wrong in some sense he really plants the seed in her mind that her dad's failing like mm -hmm. she's just she's doing the best she can and just like her dad's doing the best mm -hmm. she can but it's this guy's opinion that says like no your dad's fucking it up mm -hmm. so your mama's dead your brother's dead and your dad's a fuck up and i said so in fact you're loading the trash onto my shelf wrong but at the same time, on balance, he does say you can keep whatever you want. So that's pretty cool. That's true. That's true. In fact, he should double down and keep giving her more stuff. And just like like anything, like little girl, your life is so painful. I understand it. Take mm -hmm. anything you want. Your you want these dead. people's apartments? Take it. I don't care. Your mo your mom is dead. Your brother's dead. Your your dad's a screw up. You can take anything you want. Take anything you want. Your emotional trauma is overrides anything or any desires of anybody else. Take whatever you want. The whole silo is yours. It's a nice sweater you have there, Grandpa. <laughs> I want that's an, that's, I want one of your shoes, Grandpa. <laughs> Take, yeah. give, me, give me your shoe. But yeah, you're right. It's totally inappropriate. He's working. You know, you shouldn't be doing this alone. But society needs these old grandpa, grandma types that like hand out this sage wisdom. And sometimes even if it's not asked, it's like it is such good wisdom. But it's not wisdom. That's just a, an observation. It's not grand wisdom from a grandpa who's experienced. He, he's just <laughs> he's just observing that she's being sort of emotionally neglected by her father. That's not right. Wisdom would be supporting her and getting the information you need without judgment. Ah, uh, yeah. He's not quite at that grandpa stage yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe in twenty years he'll find another person in the situation and give them like the gentle advice. Mm -hmm. And maybe. Go talk to the father and he said and you know without making the daughter feel bad and say hey i saw your daughter she was looking pretty distraught or shut down just letting you know you know so he and if he has that kind wisdom feel to him yeah it could work that's a good point so like he i guess he is the right person to give this advice but not at this age he should be waiting until later is the age the important thing Oh, well, it's the important thing for her, right? Important thing for him too. In fact, we should recycle him. Send him to the dirt. That's right. Build uh, a sage old man from the ground up. <laughs> from the, yep. Grow him up like a tree. <laughs> he screwed up his advice once. Cremate him. 
Woo! <laughs> Every every sentence is life and death in the silo. <laughs> it's a constant churn. Just <laughs> the talent oh. will rise to the top. <laughs> oh, meaning everybody's dead. So the best person and the worst person is the last one alive. So Juliet just started as sheriff, and her secretary makes her sign suspicious documents. Let's take a look. These are the arrangements for John's funeral. I'll handle it. You just sign. Should I read through it, or you ever made arrangements for a ceremonial burial? No. And that's your answer. So her secretary has obviously shown she doesn't like her. She's shown, shown condescension and she's shoving documents in Juliet's face and saying, sign them. What if there's some problem with the documents? Suspicious. Feels sus. Like what would I do if I want, <clears throat> if I wanted to like get somebody's signature on something that was inappropriate actually? Like I would be like, oh, you don't understand it. It's going to be super complicated. Here, just sign it. You could have a bunch, you could have like a hundred pages of legitimate documents with like one page that's illegitimate. And now I've got your signature on a pretty suspicious document. And then if something goes down, I can be like, Sheriff did it. Sneak attack. Sheriff did it. See, Sheriff signed off. Mm -hmm. So somebody's showing open hostility toward you. Read the documents. Read the documents. We'll see if this comes up later in the show. Maybe this will come around to bite Juliet in the ass. <laughs> Juliet gets demoted to like a smaller office. It's <laughs> real tiny. Like, well, you signed it. <laughs> like, you signed it. You now yeah. work in the closet. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's like a, a mini troll. You just signed away your office to the secretary and you're now assigned to the closet. <laughs> what if she signed in writing that like you can't close the door? Like the door has to stay open all the time because Holston kept the door open all the time. Like, look, you serve signature here. In fact, the door must be removed by right. the document you signed. So it will always be open. And your desk has to face the window at all times. And people walk up to your back. You sign the paper. You sign the paper. You sign the paper. In fact, the desk is removed. You have to stand in the middle of the room. Typing. I'm standing loud. Half squat all the time. Work the quads. Quads and glutes. All the time. <laughs> in fact, it must be one-legged squats. All Ooh, times. You can switch legs if you want. Squats. That's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Actually, for the sheriff, that might be a very good thing to do because, like, you got to go up and down. You got to walk the silo all the time. So strong quads, glutes, hams, mm -hmm. calves. Yep, very important. Mm -hmm. Turns out it backfires on the secretary. Single leg squat work turns into this Juliet being a beast. Who's being taking a beast. Ass, kicking ass. Being a, the safest silo ever because everyone's like, that sheriff, I respect that. Everyone starts working on the cardio. This is great for everyone in the silo. So uh, she should really, she should sign this. <laughs> this is pretty good. This is Juliet in the cafeteria. They look underappreciated. Look how well run this is. Holy crap. That's right. The cafeterias feed 10,000 people a day, multiple, I guess 10,000 people a day, but that's multiple meals a day. So this is a tightly run ship. That's right. They have all the, the cups and cutlery out. The coffee machine has multiple pots with coffee in it, ready to rock. The workers clean in. You know, putting food out, refrigeration. No one's and sitting around doing nothing. Smooth running ship. Juliet doesn't even say thank you. This is a mm. smooth operation. Underappreciated. Underappreciated and underrated. And they have to deal with like cleanliness and hygiene and mold. And like you cannot let up. And it's day in, day out for 150 years. Holy shit. These people are keeping the silo alive. Well, they could clean the light fixtures. Yeah, I get, that's, that's true. That's Yep, every surface should be clean because you never know what might grow bacteria. That's true. Although, did we say this is maybe oil residue with little dust on it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess that should be cleaned, huh? Should be cleaned. Should Especially, be cleaned. I mean, even for the morale reason. Like, it's nice to eat in a clean place. That's right, yeah. That's right. But generally, it looks pretty clean. I'm seeing clean floors. This is looks that a dessert clean. cabinet? That looks like a, des like a cake display. Right here, yeah, right here. Oh my gosh, they got desserts yeah. up in here? I mean, if they're putting that level of effort in to keep the silo people happy and fed, who damn, who damn, I'd eat there. I'd eat there. Well, I mean, you have no choice. But uh, You have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. Bar Marnes. Juliet and Marnes go down to find this criminal's wife, uh, but then she turns out to be not to be alive. Let's watch. The fuck are you doing here, Marnes? We are here to talk to your wife. She's been dead for a year. That made me worried. That made me worried because as sheriffs, they should be able to either know who is alive <laughs> at any given time or have it be readily looked up. So it makes me wonder if if they didn't know that his wife was dead, um, who's doing record keeping? Who, who's keeping track of who's alive and who's dead in, in the silo? 
I thought it should be IT because they like keep track of records and stuff. And I think it would be very easy to keep track of who's alive and who's not alive. So if they're not doing that, what's 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 going on in IT? Even if it wasn't easy to keep track of who's alive and dead, it's kind of important information in the silo. That's right. So what is Bernard? I believe that's his name, Bernard, the IT guy. What's he doing? Is he not keeping track of alive and dead people? What is their what is all their servers running if not keeping track of important things? Like if you have too many people in the silo, you can't feed them or you run out of oxygen. Or if you have too few people, you don't have enough people to run the silo. You really have to have the right balance. And so so what's what's going on? How do they know what they have? What is IT doing? Does IT have the information and they're not sharing it with other departments? That would be bad. That would be also bad because they have the information, but they're not giving information to other people that need to make decisions. That's that's like power grabby stuff. Also not good. That's right. I guess that does happen in bureaucracies where people are like, this is my domain. Don't touch it. But we need to work together. Right. Special and operations joint task force. Uh, people being alive versus dead and population census numbers has huge ramifications throughout the silo for power requirements, apartment distribution, food. Yeah, heck, they even keep track of who's allowed to have kids. I mean, in order for that to happen, you need to know how many kids can be born. So yeah, what's going on with their record keeping? We're seeing, we're seeing through the armor of the uh, the silo, something kind of weird going on here. It also could be that the, the records do exist. They're just cumbersome to look up. So just go knock on the door. Don't worry about it. That's yeah, okay. Maybe you guys, maybe, maybe Marnes and Juliet just didn't go and knock on the door. Find out one way or the other. Or maybe they just didn't expect the wife to be dead, so they didn't think to look it up. Yeah, I don't know. Possible. Maybe maybe she was just on... I don't know. Sheriff didn't know. <laughs> Sheriff didn't know. Well, I hope. We hope. We got to keep a lookout for this. How is record keeping done in the silo? How does IT share that information? Assuming IT is the one that does the record keeping. How's that shared with other departments? Judicial... The sheriff mechanical needs to know because they have power requirements. That's right. Hmm. Interesting. So in the previous episode, we see Holston writing a note on his police notepad and he rips it kind of willy nilly like there's plenty of paper, no problem. But is that so in the silo? Let's watch. I'm also looking for about 10 sheets of paper. That much paper I remember. I don't recall seeing anything like that. So Juliet's looking for the 10 sheets of paper because Juliet and Wilkins, uh, we're looking at the hard, no, no, it was Wilkins hard drive and paper, but it was Juliet and um, Holston Allison. looking. Allison. Wait, it was, wait, wait. It was Allison, Allison and Wilkins were looking at that stack of paper with the hard mm-hmm. drive. And then Allison dies, and then Holston is looking at the paper that that Wilkins has. And then now Juliet looking for that paper. No, <laughs> I see. I see. I see. Okay. 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 Hold on. Hold on. So, here, this paper was written by Allison, uh-huh. and the hard drive was found by Wilkins. And Allison right. and Wilkins together do some deep dive on the hard drive. Now, Juliet and Holston are doing investigating and find this. There it is. So, so in this clip, Juliet is looking for this stack of paper. Let's watch. I'm also looking for about 10 sheets of paper. That much paper I'd remember. I don't recall seeing anything like that. And the important thing is that the recycler says, I'd remember 10 sheets of paper as if it's scarce. And yet in the first episode, we see Holston willy nilly tearing paper as if it's not scarce. What's going on here? My read on that is that this is some casual classism. So in the mids and in the down deep, they don't get as much paper, whereas in the up here, they get as much paper as they want. In fact, when they move into new apartments, they get that really crisp, clean card stock, which means they get like high quality paper. It has to be because there's no way that Holston would tear the paper like that if it was scarce. Yeah. And there's no way that the recycler would say it is, it would act like it is scarce if it wasn't. The only way to explain that is just classism. Different people get different stuff. Silo. I guess that's the way the society functions. I mean, at the same time, it is functioning. It's been around for like, what is it, 160 something years? And they only have energy coming in through that geothermal vent, which means they're taking care of stuff pretty well. So I guess it's not ideal, but the hierarchy and society they set up 
it functions to keep people alive. Okay. 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 Hey, let me see. Throwing too many things down the chute. Mechanical's complaining again, saying 90% of what you throw away, they fix, which is no doubt a load of shit, but I gotta check. They've got five minutes. 12 recycling stations are all on different schedules. This is crazy. Dumping once in exact time every hour. This is crazy. It times out so that every five minutes, something else falls. This is crazy. So we find things we can repair and send back up or use down here ourselves. This is crazy. Stuff falls, they drag it, we sort it, and fix what we can in the next room. This is crazy. The stuff that we don't use goes to the incinerator. Primo parts go to Walker. This is crazy. I mean, it's crazy. It's but so dangerous. So many things to talk about here. So first off, if they're going to repair things, uh, they're going to repair things down uh -huh. in the down deep. What are they doing dumping? Right. If something was repairable, it ain't now. <laughs> Even if you got to straighten it out, you could have just sent it down gently. Wouldn't have to straighten it out. Maybe, maybe before it gets dumped into this spot, there's some sifting going on in some other place that says, okay, unrepairable raw materials go this way, dump it, and repairable stuff goes to a different direction. Because this wouldn't make sense. If they're gonna repair some of these things, there's no way you just drop it from 20 feet. That's like a guaranteed break it. Another thing I noticed is look at this, look at the raw materials this guy is throwing away. I see pipes and tubing, maybe. And then this other guy, look at these things. This looks very useful. I feel like after surviving for 160 years or whatever the silos lived for, people would become very disciplined about what's useful, maybe not useful to them, but useful to somebody else. Like the, the actual true garbage would be very small because they That's only right. have a limited amount of stuff that they can use. Right. If you, if you know the worth of your trash, that could be traded for people with people for things you need, which could be Actually, their trash. Yeah. They could have a, like a black market barter system. Mm -hmm. And even if this is trash to you and you can't find a buyer or a barterer, this is raw materials. Maybe this could mm -hmm. be sold to somebody for meltdown. Right. So it's a lot of trash. It's wild. And the system that they have where it's like it drops down out of the ceiling and then you have mm -hmm. like five minutes to scavenge, like that's mm -hmm. so dangerous. It's also not only dangerous to the people, but it's dangerous to like you just get a pile of stuff and then new stuff keeps coming down on top of it and you just you can't get it fast enough i also think like okay would the would criminals get first dibs on trash wouldn't like the higher ups get first dibs on trash because that's important stuff what were they, they criminals say? down there i thought they were recyclers Let's listen. they've got five minutes 12 recycling stations are all on different schedules. This is crazy. Dumping once in exact time every hour. This is crazy. It times out. So I think the, the, the people who get five minutes right there through, from the uh -huh. dump are actually criminals. That's what they said. So oh. they've been hired by mechanical. I guess not hired, freelancing with mechanical to do this because it's an undesirable job. At the same time, that is a lot of stuff falling. I see stuff that's worth a lot. That's right. You, even as raw materials. I mean, I guess what guarantees that the criminals don't take stuff that's actually super useful and then they do their own things with it, whatever that may be. It sounds like mechanical just gets the, the junk. But even junk, if you don't have manufacturing, global supply chains, recycling is super important. Junk is no longer junk in a lot of respects. That's right. Somehow the system works. It must this get recycled. It is crazy. I. I need to know more information about how this recycling system works because they've been doing it for 150, 250 years. It's been working. Heck, mm. if they've got a way that works, maybe we can learn from it. That's right. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Very interesting. Falls, they drag it, we sort it, and fix what we can in the next room. This is crazy. I just wonder. Is it good? Crazy good. It must. It there is something. There's a lot of information we're missing about how exactly this stuff gets from the recycling stations on the different levels down to down down to the down deep, and all how that sifting process goes. How the criminals siphon off some of stuff. How the raw materials get melted down. How stuff gets repaired. Because it must be a quite a closed system in many respects. And maybe we're just getting slices of the system. 
we're not seeing like the full system in work where you know somebody takes 10 percent that next person takes 10 percent and when it gets down to the bottom like half a percent is wasted and thrown away Amazing. so it's really closed curious yeah curious very interesting i want to see more maybe we'll see more i don't know terrible working conditions is the working conditions in the down deep legal <laughs> hours before the light cycle today i eat lunch standing up and if i'm lucky i get a half an hour break every night i am exhausted i fall asleep before my head hits the car i'm happy i really don't have time to think about mom or jacob mechanical doesn't need anyone looking for an escape mechanical needs workers people committed everyone in the silo relies on us so if you can't commit to that i don't care where you go because you're not needed here i'm good at this sounds like the only people who can work under these conditions are people who are needing an emotional escape that's right. If you're a person standing on your own two feet with, you know, high self-worth, you're not going to put up with these working conditions where you can't, don't even have a break. You're, you're literally working next to a child labor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, but she's right. good at it. <laughs> but you can't work people to the bone like that. It's not going to, it's not sustainable. Can't, I mean. That's right. That's right. I mean, apparently it's sustainable because they've been around for like 160 years, <laughs> but, but they are definitely working them too hard. Give people a break. Give them a chance to little, take a little breather, do a little safety break. I mean, maybe it is sustainable if you oppress the lower classes so they have no choice and no way out. Mm -hmm. Then the only choice they have is to work and that's it. Then sure, they don't mm -hmm. have choice. It's more like slavery. But that being said, the people in the down deep have pride in their work. Like they're doing an excellent job and they are right that they are keeping everyone in the silo alive. So the upper classes are using the down deep's pride in their work as a form of oppression. Okay, but they're good at their work. <laughs> but it works. Hey. Right. So in this episode, they I think they, that people in the silo either have an unlimited amount of beer or they've got some serious recycling systems going on. Let's watch. So here's Sims. I went to visit his wife, Doris. She threatened me. He pops a bottle and then Marns. He pops a bottle. Now, now these bottles, like, uh, like, like drink a beer, you'll see it. Like when you pop open the top, this is like a steel thing, a steel cap, I think. And that has like this crimped top, which means they have tools that can take flat sheets of, of steel and then crimp it. And then not only that, but it needs to have like a rubber seal. It's not just straight up steel to glass. Like, like next time you drink a beer, check it out. And so that means that, that, Either these bottles are from the before time, and these are like relic beers, um, like finely aged 160 years beers, that or they're able to make beers here. They're able to make, I guess, out first alcohol. They're able to like brew beer, and then also they're they're able to to make these cappy guys with like a thin, just enough rubber coating. And also probably these bottles, like they probably break, and so either there's like a huge supply of bottles that have been waiting around for a long time to be used. Or the people in the silo are able to melt and form glass bottles. We know they recycle. So, and glass is recyclable. And glass is important for functioning society. So maybe they oh, yeah. just manufacture bottles. Heck, even in this apartment, we see other uses of glass. Like that that coffee maker, that coffee pot right there. And the, the handle, I think he has glass cabinets but he definitely has a glass on his oven door and glass windows so so like if the people in the silo are not recycling glass i can't imagine after 60 years like they have that many surviving windows and doors like you would just have broken glass all over the place so, so if they're very careful about recycling the glass that breaks maybe they have a whole level that does glass manufacturing cool maybe okay yeah. what about the uh what about the uh the caps Tops, what do you call them? Right. Um, the caps, the tops. Yeah. yeah. The, even if they're a twist off, I mean, that would that would be an, an additional layer of like finer, fine machinery. Um, but they these are one time use, like they're using regular bottle cap openers. Where like, but when you do that, you pry the thing apart. Like it's not to reuse it. You'd have to like restructure the thing. You'd have to like melt it down and shape it. Um, and not, not only that, but next time, look, next time you open up one of these bottles, there's like a little rubber ring on it that gets the actual air seal. That means that people in the silo are able to do some quite, quite skillful manufacturing. So a rubber comes from potentially trees. from trees. Yeah. If it's plastic seal, that could also come from Drink like if you're oil. growing corn or rice. You oh, can, good point. Good point. You can create plastic from the leftover leaves and stalks. Possible. 
uh, you could recycle the steel. You know, sure. if you actually keep the cap and send it to recycling, you could melt it down and reform it. I guess you just flick it down to the silo that collects at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It is a little inefficient in the sense, like making these individualized bottles where every, these caps are everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I guess in Fallout, the currency is caps. So <laughs> that's maybe right. people hoard them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's tough to know what what would if you're in a resource scarce environment like this glass manufacturing steel manufacturing bottle manufacturing is that going to get priority over other things probably not but if the founders were really good at thinking ahead long term then yeah you got to have enough space in your silo to include those things because 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 it's sealed off from the rest of the world you have to have everything contained inside it that's right and i guess glass is important not just for bottles but windows and like we said the oven and even you know somebody breaks a cup up in the cafeteria you know need to replace the glass yep. possibly we've seen farms we've seen parks we've seen tenements we've seen uh the down deep with mechanical we haven't seen like manufacturing levels yet so maybe we will get some more info probably down the down deep somewhere Probably down in the down deep. So down, down deep is like mechanical with the generator. And maybe above that, a few levels mid -deep. of manufacturing. Mid deep. Sure. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. So who the hell is this guy? Breaks into Marn's apartment and beats his ass. Sends a shot, points a shotgun at him. Not sure if he's going to kill Marn's. Who the hell is this? No Do idea. You recognize this guy? No idea. I had a little Mark Wahlberg vibe, but that's definitely not him. <laughs> Um, but also, what does he? What does he think he's going to do? Like he could shoot Marns here, but then I mean, it's a gunshot in a side of the silo. Like people are going to know what's going on. Like this is this this will win the fight, but then he's going to get surrounded at the door. Like I don't know what his plans are. So if it's like a suicide revenge run against Marns, then this would make okay. sense. He's going to shoot him, kill him. But it looks like he kind of wants to hold him hostage for some reason. Curious. Not just kill him. So what's the play here? No idea. No idea. We don't even know who this guy is. I guess we'll find out next episode. We'll see. Mm. Mm. Many ways to feel. We end the episode with with Juliet finding finding the notes for for George Wilkinson. Uh, let's watch this. Is it George Wilkinson or Wilkins? We end the episode with Juliet finding the message from from Holston, and which was the notes about George Wilkins. Now, my concern about this this really this really irked me. It was that there's many ways in which this could have gone wrong. There's like an exactly one way that it does work, and it seems to have been that way. Let's watch. Iffy. Iffy. Got it. Got it. Message received. Okay, so let's let's piece by piece this. So Holston, he ties a, sh a washer to a string here, to, a, to like a fishing wire or something, and puts it in an event. Mm -hmm. And so knowing Juliet, he's like, she's going to investigate this sound. But what if she was too busy? What if she was like, I take my share of business really serious and I want to find the truth that was written on, on Holston's badge. But she doesn't like connect that, like, I need to look in here. She could have asked for someone from Mechanical to come fix it. Um, and then and then they would have found this and she wouldn't have found it. Alternatively, what if she really like genuinely just likes the sound of it when she sleeps? Why would she ever investigate it if she likes the sound of it? And then and then the string like this, this, this string, I guess the string is pulling on the washer and that's what's causing it to bounce around inside the air duct. And so so that's a quite a violent bounce. That's not wind coming through the air vent and pushing the washer around. That's that's wind pushing something else that's then tugging on the string. And we see what it is. It's wind pushing on the on the envelope, the, the notes about George Wilkins. So so if you have like constant tension on the string, that's a fairly stable situation. But this like tug, 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 that's how you pull threads out of things. Like like if you have tension on the string, it could stay there for for quite some time. But this like constant pulling, constant tugging of the flapping book, um, that's ripe for like the string could get pulled away from the book or the string could get pulled off of whatever nail or something that he's wedged there. And so that's another point of failure that that could have gone wrong. I mean, it could have broken away. 
Um, and then if we look at that point, we look at the point where the book is just about to come up over the edge. Yes, right here. Right, that, that's like the, the prime point. That's the most likely point in which the book could get caught on the ledge. And then when Juliet goes to pull, she could pull the string off from the book and now the book falls down the vent. So the, like things had to go just right in order for her to retrieve this book, uh, this, this, this folder of notes of George Wilkins. And so that made me pretty concerned. It made me feel like, oh man, like this just, just worked out perfectly. I mean, let's say it did fall and okay. the string okay. broke and it did fall. It was, say it fell when Juliet was pulling it. Now she knows something fell, so she's going to go try to find it. That's true. So yeah, I guess, I guess knowing Juliet's personality, if she finds a string without something in there, then she's going to be like, what? What is this? And then she'll go chase. I guess mm. if the string broke before she found it, then she'll be like, something was attached here. This was put here. And she'll try to go find it. Oh, wait, oh. so yeah, if the, if, the sh if the notes fall off the string before she's there, the string wouldn't be pulled anymore by the book in the wind, which means that Washer would stop making sounds, which means her super engineering brain would be like, that was making sounds before and it's not now. Something happened. And then she'd go and investigate. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. And then she'd find the, the, she'd find the washer and a string with nothing attached to it. And she'd be like, that, that ain't right. And then she would like flash back to when she was in the, the place with the drillers and then, mm -hmm. and then she remembered like pulling the string with, okay, okay, okay. So Holston, okay, 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 okay. I see it. I see it. <laughs> Holston's super smart. He's like, he's like, Julia is the person that's going to find out the truth and I can leave the secret message for her in a way that only she and I understand. And even if it fails, she has the right personality to figure out. Okay. Also. And, and, oh, I got another one. I got another one. Even if she does call maintenance because she doesn't want to investigate herself, then be her people. They're, they're her people. They'd be like, hey, I found this thing and I know you're into George Wilkins. So, <laughs> so here's this book. Oh my gosh. She's the right yeah. person to be sheriff. That's right. And Holston, he had every base covered. Even at first, it sounded like this is a high failure mode situation. But actually, he's got everything covered. Super clever. God damn. <laughs> All right. assuming, All right. assuming this vent pipe stops like one, two, three levels below. It doesn't go like all the way down to the down deep. But even, even then, goes, she's going to go find it. She's going to find it. She, she, she's like, this pipe goes all the way down. I'll just follow it. And if someone from the down deep gets there first, they'll be like, hey, I know you're the sheriff and this is something that belongs to you. So here you go. Mm -hmm. So smart. Fuck. Holston. Holston. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 8D chess. 8D chess. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so she, uh, Juliet pulls up the uh, pack of papers from Holston, and this is what it says. It's a citizen record. The symbol is the administrative people, we think. Okay. And here is George Wilkins' file. His name, George Wilkins. Application for something. Identifier is 122-213-24. Interesting mm -hmm. slash. Both you are here. Slashes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think this is a job application. Looks like a job application for... In fact, those words says job applied for. Yeah, yeah, yeah job applied for. So that's a job application. Just part of his record. Makes sense. Okay. okay. School report. George oh. Wilkins. Class 1-2 something. Same identifier. Is it one 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 two two three two four? That must two, be his one, birthday. Three, two, that's the same one. It might be a combination of birthday and different things. This is the this is the permanent record that we all were lied to about kids. <laughs> lied to mm. as kids. Age at end of year, 14. So this is his, when he was a 14-year-old. Middle school or something. Arrest, two times. Ooh, Final percentage, 95. He was a troublemaker and smart. <laughs> but smart. <laughs> yes. Nice. And it's final. Yep. A picture of him. Looking good. Looking good. Citizen residence. Same identifier. Nice touch. He's in a two-bed. A three bed, damn. And then, oh, downgraded to a studio. Interesting. Assuming this is in chronological is order. That... This is, you know, this must be earliest, next, and then latest. And it's Andrew Wilkins, Andrew Wilkins, George Wilkins. So I guess maybe that he was living with his pops. Uh, that must be, it must be family. That's why they got the two bed. Still family with an extra, 
extra child maybe had a sibling so and then he bed. moved out on his own they moved out on his own oh, so okay. nice okay. nice Right ah, this is like it. the family's residence record. That's got to be guess, complicated. I guess on a on his father's and his siblings and his mother's records, they would have similar entries. Oh, okay, actually, that's good. That's re- like redundant record keeping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and cross reference stuff. Very cool. Oh, that's not his birthday. That's his identification number. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's one one two two slash thirteen dash twenty four. That's him. You think so? So one 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 two. Oh, I mean, it says identifier. But this is him, yeah. So I don't think. Oh, wait, I think it, but it, it can't looks be. like it's maybe a combination of his year, birthday is somehow generating birthday. his identifier. So he's like, it's like year, birthday, and then twenty four. Year. Oh yeah, year, and then the actual date. This would be what one hundred and twelve years after the pact the was pact. signed. Okay. okay. Yeah. This is his birthday, so that's a February thirteenth. Okay. Happy and birthday. dash 24 would maybe mean something like the 24th person born that year. Sure. I don't know what the birth rate would need to be in a place like this, but in February, 24th person born, that sounds okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they have to, they have to have 10,000 people and people live for whatever many years, people die at whatever mm-hmm. rate, and they just need to maintain reasonable. that population. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. That's a nice touch. Are we detectives? We might be. Yeah, we might be. Very cool. So nice touches to the documents here. We'll learn more next time as she investigates. So first, a lot of questions from this episode. What is judicial up to? They didn't get their sheriff appointee. So they're, you know, scheming in their palace of justice. Uh, Who was that guy in the cafeteria? We didn't really talk about him, but Juliet talked to this guy in the cafeteria and he's like, oh, hey. And she's like, bye. Who the hell? He was in the cafeteria super late at night and he didn't have any food at this table. That's Mm -hmm. sus. Uh, Juliet and Marnes made a deal. Are they going to stick to it? Marnes wants to find out what happened to uh, the mayor, well, the former mayor at this point, and Juliet wants to know what happened to George Wilkins. Will they stick to the deal? It's kind of shaky right now. And Marnes also made a deal with Sims, so um, do those conflict? That's right. Oh, that's right. (sighs) A lot going on. And then who was that guy who attacked Marnes in his home with the shotgun? We will see. Tune in next time, episode five.